Boxing Social here with the trainer of Carl Frampton, Jamie Moore. Jamie, you've made mention of introducing some new modern techniques into Carl's training schedule. Yeah. Um, can you give us a little insight into what, what they are? Yeah, I mean, you call them modern training techniques and, and they are in boxing, but in other sports they've been using them for, for the last sort of 10, 15 years. So altitude training, uh, you, you can go back to 1993 when I was in Tenerife when I was a kid watching Nigel Ben train and Nigel Ben was running up Mount Tidy for altitude training then so so they you know that that isn't modern training but we've brought in stuff where we, guesswork has been used a lot in the past where you do some a form of training whatever it is and you push yourself to the maximum and then the next time you do it you feel better doing it and you go you know what I'm fitter but now we know, we, we definitely know because we've had him tested by scientists at the Institute of Performance in Manchester. Um, he's had a nutritionist on board who's, who's analysed him, brought his weight down steadily to make sure he doesn't lose muscle as well as fat. And he's physically, he's in fantastic shape. He was amazed when he, he's done a VO2 max test and, you know, they said they'd barely seen anybody as fit as him ever in that laboratory. So. So we've had every box ticked and all that means to me is that Carl Frompton is going to put in a massive performance on Saturday. The videos and the photos that emerged on social media from the camp, from all the lads that are in your stable, yeah. um, it sort of told a story of camaraderie, friendship, good bit of competition there yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, from the inside, um, can you give it, is, it, is that what it's like? Or? I'm a big believer in creating an, uh, the right atmosphere in a gym. I think I've been in so many gyms over the years where you know, these good fighters, but the atmosphere is flat and you can never get the best out of a fighter when, when they're not in the right mood. You know, everybody, everybody in the world will do something better if they're in a good mood. And my fighters are very, very focused. They're all bouncing off each other. They're all pushing each other in the gym. They train very, very hard. But before it and after it, we like to have a laugh, we have a joke. We've got a few little jokes in the gym. Tommy Curl's a, a, a great guy to have around. And nice Travis, you know, we've got a few characters, different sorts of characters, but for some reason they've all come together and created a great atmosphere. And I put the training camp in Tenerife for two reasons. One, so that we could go up Mount Tidy, do the altitude training. But two, it's a place where outside of the gym you can relax, it's, it's laid back um, and I've been there a lot, it's, it's my, like my second home. So I know where there's places where you can go and relax without getting, you know, mithered or, or where there's not too much distraction like, nightlife wise. And you know what, it was a brilliant thing because by the time we got back from there, we sort of hit the ground running, we'd got a massive base sort of fitness and then we finished off the sparring and, and the sharpness stuff over here and it's worked brilliantly. So do you think it's important to establish a balance for having at the uh, um, hard work as well as trying to uh, have a laugh along the way as well, that, finding that balance creates a happy fighter do you think? Absolutely, you know, I, I, I think any fighter will tell you, um, if you, if you can go into the ring with a smile on your face and you're in a good place mentally, then you're going to get a better performance. And all my fighters are in a great place mentally. That doesn't mean they'll win a fight because they've still got to go in there and perform on the night and do it properly. But they're going to be in a better position to put in a good performance if they're mentally in, in a good place. As a two-weight world champion, Carl, Carl has been there and he's done it. Um, what challenge is, it, is there for a trainer who's picking somebody up at this um, stage in his career, he's an established fighter, can he teach old dogs new tricks basically? Uh, not necessarily, I don't think, I think I'd be disrespectful to Carl Frampton if I tried to change him too much because he's such a phenomenal fighter anyway. My job basically for someone, when, when you take a fighter on at that stage of his career, is to set out a good game plan, use his best attributes. Um, make him aware of his vulnerabilities so that he disguises them better. So that's, it's an easier job as a trainer than developing and guiding someone and try to teach them lessons along the way. So it's, it's not as long and drawn out. Um, it's, a, it's a more pressurised job because you're in the public eye and you're in the spotlight like today. But me personally, I don't, I, I, I don't really sort of buy into the uh, pressure thing. I just think it's a, a manufactured sort of thing. And, I, I, I quite just enjoy it. 
We don't want to delve too much into Carl's legal proceedings, but I'm just wondering, Camp, do you encourage him to invent his feelings about it, or is it just a out of sight, out of mind situation? Um, I think he's, a, he's an individual and he'll deal with it whichever way he's going to deal with it, so I don't try to get involved in that. But distraction is a good technique, so I like distraction. So if I feel like he might be playing on his mind, then I'll get Tommy Coyle to drop his pants and, and make a joke or, you know, distraction techniques are always the best techniques. And um, yeah, I think he's learned to deal with it himself. And you know what, I've got to be honest, last time it was easy, more easily for him to be distracted mentally because of the opponent. And this time, if he starts to get distracted mentally, all of a sudden he'll think about Nanito Denaire and he knows he can't afford to be distracted. So there's a big difference, there's a big difference. So his distraction level last time was up here, whereas this time it's down it's up there. Uh, finally, Jamie, uh, I think it was last year you mentioned that you were considering retiring when Tommy Cole retired. Yep. Since then, you've um, you've gone on to collect names like Martin Murray, Conrad Cumming, Flocker Fielding, all under all in your stable now, what yep. seems to be a thriving stable. How can it change round so quickly, and what's happened? Do you know what it was? He said, "Not a good story, really." I've got to be honest. You know, I had Tommy Cole. That was it, basically, and um, Oliver, my old trainer, he got he took ill. Um, and he, he was really, really poorly. So while he was out of the gym, Martin and Rocky came to train with me. Um, the situation is he, he's physically still not able to do train them properly, so, they, so they're going to stay with me for the time being. It's a team effort. You know, Oliver's a, such a close friend of mine. We've going through so much together. So it was a team effort. And then when Martin and Rocky came, um, Conrad and Stephen Ward had come with along with Carl, and then Jack Carroll's come and joined. Um, so Mark Leach, another soulful kid, he's, he's on the verge of fighting for the British title. So I've got a gym full of very, very good fighters and uh, you're right, I was thinking of walking away last September, say, um, but unfortunately in one way, this you know situation came around. But I'm loving it now, I'm enjoying it. And um, I'm, you know, one, I'm, I don't see my, I, I didn't set out to be um, a trainer, as a career, I really didn't, and sometimes you know strange things happen, and you know it's very much my career now. You know I'm so busy with it, but uh, but I'm enjoying it in a weird way. I wasn't enjoying it last September, and because I've become busier, which in a way could make you hate it more, I've started to enjoy it more. Well, one thing Carl and Conrad both mentioned was that they feel that you're getting the most out of them. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Is that, is that like a, you like you meet on a personal I think, level? I, as I well, think or? maybe it's because I'm closer to my career. Um, and I relate to the, the stuff they're doing or the way they're feeling. But I, I've always been big into psychology and you know the psychology of a fighter, what makes him tick, what what can define a performance, you know, your mentality on in the changing rooms half an hour before a fight can undo what you've done over the last twelve weeks. Mm. And I'm very aware of that. I, I, I went through that myself as a fighter a couple of times and um, and I think that for me to be able to recognise it, you know, just a little insight here, Rocky Fielding, an hour before he fought Brophy, I could see, you know, mentally he was having a little think to himself. So, distraction technique, I just took him out, started talking about something else, made him think about something else, and then brought him back to the game plan. And then, within a split second, you know, a minute later, he's right as rain. So, I don't, I, don't, I, I just think it's about recognising when someone's Minds wandering. And what are the total size of someone wandering? Not that I'd be telling, wouldn't it? <laughs> that I'd be telling because I just think that every individual is different. different yeah, yeah. So, so for me now, knowing Carl Frampton much better than I, know, I knew him last time has given me a better idea of what I've needed to do with him on a daily basis in the gym because sometimes you've got to recognise they're just having a bad day. You know, and to be fair, like he said at the press conference, he hasn't had a bad day and he really hasn't. He genuinely hasn't. He's, uh, he's been it's been such a good camp. You can just see that the it's gone from there to there to there, and I think he's going to put in a big shift on Saturday. Perfect.